Sonic and try to bring some of those ideas. Coach Brooks is kicking that, those ideas around, having him in the building. Now you got Sashi and what he's been able to do in his career in the building. And having Coach Thompson, he and I go way, way back, bouncing ideas about players on How can we recruit better? How can we do better by our athletes and our team services? Area? So I think all the there's job descriptions and then the reality is we all blend together. It's a melting pot of ideas. It's a melting pot of uh, people that we can reach out and resources. And I think that's what's so valuable to me. And I can't say it enough. This was the vision when I laid out to Ted in my interview was a team of teams, a collection of really, really, really smart people that we can all bounce ideas off of each other and in real time be able to execute and do our own jobs. And, you know, th this is just a, I think, a validation of, of that vision back then and, and now. And his, his ideas were very much in line with what we were hoping to do. So I think creating this model, I, I, I can say, we're not trying to follow trends. We're trying to set a trend. I think this is a great opportunity for the Washington basketball family. Ted was saying that you'd get a chance to put your vision for the Wizards. I guess just what is that vision and be able to... Sure. To, yeah. You know, I think we, we knew we had to get younger. You know, I think that where we had been uh, last year's team is not here anymore. Most of the players, you know, they proved their value. The market spoke. They, they had opportunities to re-sign other places, and I salute all of them. They, they were all great great people, great stewards for the Wizards, but I think where we have to go moving forward, we needed to get younger. We needed to develop talent again. We needed, we needed to get our payroll in order. I think we needed to really take a long, hard look at developing players, getting back. The rookie-scale contracts are so valuable. Trying to add back second-round picks, so those are things I just think are so incredibly valuable opportunities for us to, to add future players. Um, that, that was really what this was all about. My vision for the Wizards is it's kind of to continue to be a very up-tempo, exciting brand of basketball, sharing the ball, uh, but playing at both ends. And defensively, we're going to improve. Coach Brooks is committed to that. But I think the, the high-character players that, uh, are very hard work, and that's our vision. You know, And it's easy. Everybody's going to say that on day one. We have to be about the result. We have to be about action, not words. So I'm going to tell you that the brand of basketball we want to play, up-tempo, exciting, play at both ends, and play the hardest work team in the NBA. That's our vision. That's our goal. We have to go out and prove. By skewing younger like that, uh, obviously Brad's on a little bit of a different timeline. How do you kind of build around him, if that's the plan, I assume, but, by, but also going younger? Is, is, is there anything you have to do differently? Or? We got to make sure we're developing and we identified the right pieces around it, but Bradley was involved in all of this. And, and I'm telling you something, he's a cornerstone player, he's a franchise player, but he's also a Hall of Fame person. And we, we shared all the vision with him. We've involved him and John both in, in this. And they were very involved in our recruiting process with free agents. They were involved in all of our workouts for, for our uh, rookies. And they were very aware of what we were doing at all times. Not because hey, it, we're, we're never going to be in a situation where we go, John, what do you want to do? Bradley, what do you want to do? And that's what we're going to do. Not at all. But to be informed about decisions, to have input, I think is so valuable. And it meant the world to them. And uh, you know, I don't think you make any decisions without your business partners. Anybody that owns a business would not do that. And I look at those guys, they're business partners. Are us. And they're, they're, I think Bradley is as patient you know, of this plan. And it's been very, very much a, a great partner in this. Um, He's got two more years on his current contract, and we intend to do everything we can to help him stay here as long as he wants to be here. And I think retiring here and seeing his banner with, a, with his number on it, that's always been a goal for him. Bradley's a throwback player in that way, I guess, but I think it's certainly within, within reach. Uh, Tommy, when you talk about um, going younger, uh, part of youth is inexperience. So what, what do you, would you say would be the expectation for the Wizards going forward for next season? I'll tell you what, there's no microwave results, right? you got to go young, you're going to have to get players that understand the NBA is a very difficult place. It's not college basketball. I think a lot of our players saw that just even in summer league. When, when all of our roster guys showed up, you know, John was there, Bradley was there. We had Ish Smith buzzed in and out of town. Thomas Bryant came to town. And they all came to watch the rookies. And the rookies saw them. They saw some of their workouts. And they saw how hard these guys were working. When Isaiah Thomas was working out, I think the players stopped and looked over. The guy's working hard. And it takes it to another level. And that was good for those players to see that. I think they're going to have to manage this summer their time very wisely to get in the very best shape. Because training camp, we're going to hit the ground running. And I think 
the, the good thing about the NBA, um, and, and obviously we are very much, we're, we're young, and you've heard me say this before, but we've never checked IDs, we've never checked passports. If you can play, you can stay, and I really mean that. And, and I, I, I think the NBA is only going to continue to get younger. So I, if you really do think in the, in the next couple of years that, that high school kids will be able to come back and go straight to the NBA, well, let's prepare for that now. How are we going to develop players coming in? I think one of the things that we really made a concerted effort is to identify players that have a resume. You know, Rui wasn't 19 years old, and, and Admiral certainly wasn't. And getting Justin, those guys came, kind of came through us in the draft, and getting Garrison uh, Matthews on a on a two-way. They were all older players with a winning resume, and I think they're very well coached. So coming in the door, we're, we're trying to get those players that are ready to assume their roles, and, and I think that's a big help. And then adding the players that we did through the through trades, you know, I think when you get a player like Mo Bogner, we, we were very intrigued by him already, and, and tried to maybe even look at trading for him last year. And now you add him and Isaac Bonga to Mario Jones. Those are more players that I think are, are going to be make a, a difference on our roster. Maybe not right away, but the players that we can develop. And then being able to splice in a kid like Davies Bertans and CJ Miles, you know, that's a very, very uh, experienced duo right there that can immediately add to our, our talent, but also to our locker room. What is the patience coming in this process? In the one word that nobody's heard, it's rebuild. Is this a rebuild or not a rebuild? Well, I think the, the heavy lifting's already done, right? We don't have any players left. You go back two years ago and a team that lost to Toronto in the playoffs in six games, I think we had three players back from that. So that, that you've seen the rebuild, whether you recognize it or not. I think it's more about retooling and refurbishing and moving forward. We hit a cultural reset, and we really had to go back and get young players again, and let's get back to work. And I think that's kind of the crying mantra, the battle cry right now for this group. And it, I, I don't know, rebuild, I don't really get into that as much as it, this is the, the path forward is, is we got to develop and do better. Can you have patience with that? Can you have patience with that progress, though? Where's Absolutely. patience come in from the players and particularly from the fan and the fan base that's been patient before. Sure, absolutely. And I think patience is part of everything anytime you involve younger players. But I think if you see the product is working hard and that there's now the continuity is there and they're getting better uh, all the time, I think fans will embrace that. They're going to embrace the process. We just have to do a better job explaining our plan and what we're trying to do moving forward and let everybody see, hey, this is exactly what our logic is on all these moves. You know, there's not a lot of secrets in the NBA. What we want to develop are edges, the places that we can gain ground on the rest of our competition, those are main, those are remain secret. But I'm going to be very transparent with about all of our transactions. Why are we doing these things? And I think that's very important. Yeah. You guys have a bunch of guys talking about you already have a ton of guys in basically early, early 20s. Mm -hmm. John Thompson has a lot of experience with people of that age. Right? Absolutely. Is, that, is that transferable? Does that, do you think about that when you think, all right, this is somebody who's good with working yeah, absolutely. And I think he, he knows exactly how, you know, when we were talking about from a team services standpoint, all the all of college basketball is about recruiting and being able to develop the person as much as the player. So that's exactly in line with what we're trying to do. Of course, Thompson and I have always had a special relationship. And then, you know, we've done a lot of stuff together with USA Basketball, spent a lot of time evaluating players. We said Jason Randall to them, Chris Chioza to them, is for the World Cup qualifying team. Uh, John and I have always been on the phone. He's been at our practices. He's part of our, you know, by extension, anybody that's involved with USA Basketball, anybody that's been involved in D.C. Basketball, they're part of our family, and we all look out for each other. And John's been a great resource. I think he'll continue to be a great resource no matter what the question is. You know, we're, we have a young coach that we just promoted, right, from, from the go-go. He's going to be with, with Scotty uh, and Jarrell Christian. So now Ryan Richmond's going to go be the head coach of the go-go for the first time. Well, John could be a great mentor to him as a head coach talking to a head coach I think that's a very valuable piece but he can also help us with Sashia as we're trying to get players organized and get their families moved here and starting up in, in D.C. He has all that knowledge so look at all the different experiences that he can bring to the table we're going to tap into all of them. Tommy Thank you. As, you know, as someone who's been here for, with the franchise for, for a while how did you how do you differentiate yourself from previous leadership? I've always been my own person I don't think that I've ever been out 
in front trying to seek any attention or do anything other than just do my job and be connected to this group, to this organization, to our players, and, and certainly to the basketball community. I think that's where I, I, I think that's where I'm pretty well known. So I, I don't really look to differentiate ourselves moving forward. I'm not looking to do that. We're just trying to create a new way of doing business, and that's what we're. I think this today kind of validates that and confirms that. But this is part of a much bigger plan. Hey, this is how I think the NBA is going to be moving forward. We better adapt very quickly. To it. Tommy, you had a very good quote at ESPN about showing me state. I appreciated that. But with regarding Brad Bill, with that being said, is it an expectation that you may have to wait a year? He may have to see how 2019-2020 plays out before accepting? Hey, I leave that completely up to Brad. You know, I, I think we have to show him the opportunities that he has here to be a fantastic player exists. And the fact that he came here and was able to become a two-time All-Star and experience the success that he's had already, you know, that, that certainly is validated from the past. But moving forward, looking, you know, most players like to know who they're playing with. And I think he was very excited about some of the young talent that we brought in. And moving forward, where's that going to be? I, I think Bradley's excited about the vision of that. But I, I have, it's a completely a business transaction. On July 26th, it's the first time we can do anything with Brad. Out of respect to him, that day we're going to have a conversation, but I don't expect an answer anytime soon. We have to show Bradley, certainly, but he's got a lot of things that he has to do with his family, with his agent, with his life to decide whatever the, the future is for him. But we have two more years. We're, we're really excited about that. And you can do a lot of things very quickly in the NBA when you're all aligned. And I'm, I'm telling you, don't, don't sleep on the fact that the NBA, especially next year, I think there's a lot, a lot of hype and a lot of heat about a lot of teams. There's other teams that can kind of sneak up on people, and we're excited about that opportunity. If he does say no, though, does that affect your decision making with him going forward and terms of other teams call, calling him? I think you, in this business, those kinds of those kinds of uh, conversations are always going to be kept private. Sure, but Bradley. What, what if he was to say no, if he was to say yes, I, I think it's all about what's best for everybody in the room, certainly. And I think with Bradley, he, he has the, the right to choose what he wants to do, you know, in terms of what does he want his team to look like, what is his teammates, all those things. That, that's what free agency allows for, but he's not a free agent. This is an extension. Um, I'm just excited. Let's, let's focus on this summer and getting out, getting everybody in place, get ready to have the best training camp, the best season coming up. That's really where the focus is for us. Did you have any hesitation on pitching it more younger direction because you know Ted had his comments of we're not going to tank I know this isn't necessarily a tanking job but you are skewing younger there was an expectation to win 50 games Ted obviously wants to win as you guys all do is there was there some hesitation that you had in pitching that how did you settle on that direction I think it, it, what you do is you said this is the best opportunity long term and we certainly could have brought everybody back and try to try to do whatever we could to patch it together and maybe get to the A spot maybe somehow grind out 45, 50 wins with, with all those contracts that those players signed other places, we'd be right back where we were next year. Right? If we did a bunch of one-offs and two-pluses, those contracts were, were setting you up to have to repeat this in a summer or two. That's not where we're going. We want to look bigger picture, much longer term. And I think for us to clean up our salary caps, to get our best opportunity to, to acquire some play, some picks for future players, I think that was our, our really big focus. I think we were able to accomplish that. we got a lot more to do. There's no question. But I ask, I can't ask people to be patient. I just ask them to judge us on the results that we're going to produce. But the way you do that, I think, is by being very transparent with your players. Hey, come in here and work hard. We're going to do everything possible to develop you to be the very best best player we can. We need you to work hard. We need you to be consistent. And we need everybody to come together. If they do those things, I think we'll be fine. Our growth will be very positive. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> Fantastic.